Hey guys, how you doing? It's Pat from Jotmon57. Um, coming at you today, I want to kind of continue where I left off the other day. Um, we're talking about retirement. We're talking about why I personally think that people really need to start seriously thinking about where their retirement is and where their retirement's going. So um, I did a little research the last couple of days. I mean, it wasn't that tough. God bless Google. You know, you just kind of type in what you want to hear and you end up with a million different websites. They give you the stats. So a couple things that I want to talk about, first of all. For those of you that are thinking, well, you know what? I'm making okay money. Um, I'm going to have enough time. I'm going to have enough to retire. Besides, you know, by the time I get to 65, I'm going to be able to go ahead and collect Social Security. And then I'll get Medicare. And that'll kind of compensate for all the other stuff. And those are some benefits that I've earned all these years from working. And the government's going to take care of me. Well, first of all, let me, let me kind of clue you in. And I'm not going to bash Democrats. I'm not going to bash Republicans, Tea Party, Independents, Peace and Freedom people, you know, pumpkin eaters, whatever you want to call them. Politicians are not your friends, plain and simple. Now, some of them, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to throw a blanket on everybody, but some of them actually get into the job thinking that they're going to actually go in and kind of do some pretty cool stuff. And they go in with the right, right ideas and the right heart. But they eventually find out that the way the system works, they just can't do what they think they're going to do. So in the end, what they're doing is they're trying to figure out what they can do for their friends. And they're trying to figure out how they can position themselves so when they get done with political office, they can go into the private sector and draw a six-figure paycheck or, you know, make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars on the speaking tour or get hired by one of the networks as some kind of political pundit where they can go on on tv and talk about all the great stuff that they've learned over the years so trust me politicians are are, are not our friends they load us up with crap they get us to believe their crap and then they do whatever they feel like doing so here's some here's some pretty scary scary statistics for those of us and those of you out there that think that the government's out here they're going to take care of us and they're going to protect us um, I went online and i was looking at basically what the average age of retirement has been over the last say 60 years so in 1950 the average um uh let's see the average life life expectancy let's just talk well let's talk about retirement first the average age of retirement in 1950 um, was 70 years old. In 1980, it had gone down. The average age of retirement was 64 years old. And in 2010, it had stayed pretty much the same. It was still pretty static. So the average age, I figure today, is you know, right around 64 years old. So now let's look at some statistics about the average life expectancy of people in the United States. Now, keep in mind, we are not the healthiest people in the world. So while a lot of countries in the world in the rest of the world are getting better we're kind of stagnating we're not really getting all that great we're not we're going up a few years but it's not as good as it could be so think about this in 1950 the average life expectancy of a female was 71 years old the average life expectancy for a male was 65 65.6 .6 to be exact so almost 66 years in 1980 for females it had gone up to 77.4 for males, 70 years old. Life expectancy was 70 years old. In 2010, life expectancy for women was 81.1. For men was 78.7. Now, what does this kind of show us? Well, women are slowing down. Why? Because of the equality. Women want to get into the workplace. Want, women want the same advantages that men do, and I don't blame them. You know, they want to go out and do the same job, make the same kind of money that a guy does. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is they don't realize that they're going to be putting up with the same stressors that men have had to put up with. Okay, so they're going to go into the work environment and all of a sudden they're going to get hit with the things that are going to give them heart attacks, things that are going to give them strokes. The only thing that women got, mostly got going for them is that they don't lose their hair like the rest of us do because of stress and anxiety. So God bless them. So... From 1950 to 2010, there was about a 20% increase in the life expectancy for men. So what does this tell us? Well, in 1950, the average retirement age was 70 years old, but yet the average life, uh, the average life expectancy for a man was 65. 
So that basically was telling us that the average guy, the average Joe was going to die five years before he could retire. For a woman, 71, she'd get to live a whole year after she retired. So most companies were going, yeah, you know what? We'll give you great retirement. Pfft. You know, big deal, because they knew that most people weren't going to live 20, 30 years after retirement. And they were only going to have to pay retirement benefits for a few years, and then the rest of that money was going to go back into the retirement fund. So by the year 2010, the retirement age went to 64. So for men and women, roughly 80 years old is the average, average life expectancy. So you're looking at about 16 years from the time when the average person retires to the average time they pass away. So now companies are going, okay, well, 16 years, you know, of giving you, you know, 75, you know, 65, 75, 80% of your salary and you're not producing anything for us. Well, you know, it just doesn't work out that way. So what I'm telling you and what I've been trying, what I'm going to try to impress upon you is that if you're in that, even if you're 20 years old, if you're 30 years old, you know, I know this doesn't mean anything to you, but, but here, check this out. This comes directly from the Social Security Administration's trustee, 2017 trustees report that they're estimating that Social Security will be broke by the year 2030. Four. 17 years. So if there's a 16 year gap between the time that the average person retires to the day that the average person dies, and if you're two or three years away from retirement, that means that there's probably a really good chance that they're going to be broke by the time you get ready to retire. And you think that you're going to collect that money. You might collect it for a couple years. It ain't going to go anywhere. So what I'm saying is you got to stop depending on the government. Stop depending on other people. You need to depend on yourself, which means that you have to start looking at other avenues. What I would suggest and what I've started doing is get books by people that have become successful. Guys like Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs. You know, I know a lot of people don't like this guy, but he was a great businessman. He went broke and he got his money back. Trump. Great businessman. I'm not going to talk about his politics, but as a businessman, he knows what he's doing. Read some of the stuff he's put out there. Yeah, there's a lot of hyperbole around a lot of this stuff, but look at it like going to Golden Corral or going to your favorite buffet. There's a million things out there on the shelf, but you pick and choose the things that you like and the things that are going to work for you. So I would start definitely start doing something. Uh, one of the guys that I look to, um, one, of, one of the financial mentors in my life is a guy by the name of Robert Kiyosaki. And he will tell you one of the most important things you have to do is you have to continue your financial education. Because this isn't stuff that they ever taught us in school. You know, they taught us how to ring up a cash register, how to write a sale. You know, back in, back in my day, they had, you know, industrial arts for the guys, they had home ec for the girls. They kind of dates me and let you guys know I, I graduated from high school in 1975. So I've been around a while. So, but what I'm telling you, get your financial education, start looking um, and ask yourself a couple questions like this. If you're still working today and you're putting money aside for your retirement, are you living the lifestyle today that you really want to live? I mean, can you take off and go on vacation when you want to go on vacation? Can you do the things that you want to do? I mean, if the car breaks down, it's a no-brainer, boom, it goes into the shop. You know, you pay the two or $3,000 anymore what it's going to cost you to get the car fixed. Ain't that big a deal. But if you're like me, if you're driving a car that's anywhere from 5 to 15 years old because you just don't want to get a car payment because you really can't afford it, then nothing's going to change when you retire. It's not going to get any better. As a matter of fact, it's going to get worse because you're only going to have a percentage of your retirement. So I'm going to tell you right now what you want to do, start getting financially smart. Start thinking about investments. Start looking at people that have made money and find out how they make money and start looking at different ways to make money. Now, we're going to go down the road a little ways. We're going to talk about different avenues of making money. And if your idea of making money is to go to work for the local fast food restaurant along with the other 65, 70, 80, 80 year olds, 
you know, that's your choice. I'm not going to condemn anybody for making choices in their life. I'm just saying that the smarter you get, the less those, the less those cho choices are going to make sense to you. All right, so I'm going to cut it off. I went a little bit, went quite a bit longer than I wanted to, but, you know, like I said, these, these are issues that are near and dear to my heart. I want to see people get to a point in their life where they can enjoy their life. Because the problem is, I saw all my older family, you know, they retired, but it didn't look like they were enjoying their life. All right, so until next, guy, next time, guys, wise up, start reading, start looking at the financial reports, and start researching some of this stuff for yourself. But the most, most important thing is here, here. This eight inches right here is the toughest eight inches to get, get across when it comes to learning something new. Don't ever give up the desire to learn something new, and we'll see you next time.